Expensive uh, cloak, red, gold trim. Uh, most you're pretty sure that this uniform, in and of itself, would cost you more than two years of your salaries back home. But you recognize them all from the recruitment drives as Lord General Matisse. He is effectively going to be the one in command of multiple regiments controlling the uh, southern front that you will be occupying. And as he looks out at all of you, you've all had to assemble uh, in formation. You're all lined up. As a matter of fact, let's get this started off properly. Just give me a command roll with a plus 20, our dear Sergeant Arkloid. Right. While he's rolling, real quick. Sergeant Laszlo. Real quick, one more question. Yep, go for it. My ballistic uh, megadendrite doesn't specifically mm -hmm. start with a weapon built into it. Oh, it doesn't? It says it can be mounted with any uh, pistol-grade uh, weapon with the compact upgrade. So, one thing you could do... Hmm... I'm trying to remember. Technically, you could use your trade armor to try and take your issued M36 and cut it down into a carbine, but I don't believe that would classify it as a pistol. Right. So, and I, let I me don't get imagine 300 that. shits would uh, give me a pistol, would it? Uh, no. Potentially, I would allow your. Uh, I would allow you to try and roll your. Was it? You have a knowledge of the. You don't have anything with the department department munitorum though, right? Uh, no. no. Just the so would, mechanicus. I would allow your uh, sergeant to attempt to roll a logistic test for a las pistol just for you though, uh, and I'd give a bonus as it basically instead of being issued a las gun, you could you could try and swap out your las gun for a las pistol, but that would also leave you without your las gun. What what would this be? So this would be just a regular 1D100, and for, of course, I always skip the logistics rolls. Hold on just a second. Page 161. So basically, a LAS pistol is super, super easy to get. So you normally have a 25, but because uh, LAS pistols in this situation, actually, I believe they're just common. Las pistol, yeah, common. So, uh, since it's common, and because you have multiple regiments, uh, that would be a 45. So attempt to just roll me one straight, 1D100, one and try and get under a 45. Sorry. I do appreciate the instant, sorry. So, <laughs> Sergeant Laszlo, you attempt to fill out this requisition, requisition form, and as you guys are, and as you're filling it out, uh, you make a couple a couple mistakes. You refill it out. You realize that you uh, instead of las pistol, you put down laser pistol, which is a like it gets sent back to you. By the time you finish you finish out the actual requisition form, you realize that you are late to the formation for the address of Lord General Matisse. And the reason that you are made aware of this is because the lieutenant in charge of your entire platoon, uh, uh, Lieutenant Harper, is already sort of sweating, walking in, and he goes, he goes, where are your men? Why aren't you in formation? You were supposed to be there. We had instructions to be there ten minutes ago. Look, what are you doing look, filling out forms? And you know that classic, you know, you've been, you just started sleeping and then you jerk away. He kind of does that, looks at the clock, looks at him. And then there's an earth shattering, fuck. You know, they do the whole thing, you know, shot from orbit. You can still hear it. <laughs> you see the lieutenant goes, yes, precisely what I was trying to convey. You have a, you have a chrono, don't you? And he, he takes out his own little pocket chrono. He goes, look, the little hands and the big hands represent different things. Here. And he hands, he hands you his own chrono. You now have a best quality chrono. And I'm keeping that. 
make it all completely accidental, of course. But yeah, now it's mine. Yeah. The captain specifically told us that we need to be there 10 minutes prior to the formation at 5 o'clock. It is now 5 o'clock. I need your men there now. I'm going back there. I'll have them as simple as possible. Please do. I'm not going to look back until it's time to address the men. When I look back, you had best be there. And he sort of in a huff. And you realize Lieutenant Harper might be 19 years old. He comes from one of the wealthiest sort of districts of your entire planet. Uh, you've heard a lot of rumors, but a lot of what the lower enlisted have to say implies that the officers are basically just doing this in an attempt to get land and territory. Uh, being landed gentry on your planet is not exactly easy to do. However, since the Imperial Guard is promising uh, land commensurate with your rank, potentially these well-off but not exactly upper-crust individuals could get a big boost to their stature and ranking on the new planet compared to where you are currently. You're not sure if this is true, Lieutenant Harper, but, uh, well, who's to say? Well, he's a commissioned officer. You know, he, he can get be fucked right now for all I care. I gotta Literally get for anything. But, uh, you, I'm not going to make you roll navigate. However, you uh, you do know where the assembly grounds are. And as you guys, you, most of your people are all gathered up. It's not hard for you to do. However, roll me a command to see if you can fall in appropriately. See how eight up your formation looks. And this would be a command roll with a plus 20. Not the plus 20. So with a plus 20, you would have a degree of success. So, as you... uh. As you get everybody together, you have them all fall in. It's only ten men or so, including the tech priest and the hunchback. But you manage to deftly march them through the halls. And fortunately, uh, as you guys are marching through the halls, you're even able to recognize the sign of the Aquila. It's actually sort of a giant regimental flag with a double-headed golden eagle at the top. And you're able to snap off a quick salute considering not saluting this would have potentially gotten you flogged and then executed uh fortunately oh, yeah. everybody everybody falling in at the right time allowed you to not be too distracted so i'm not going to make you roll a perception test but you manage to see the aquila you snap off the salute you're the only one in the for formation that needs to and you are quickly ushering your men inside you fall into the back it doesn't seem like you're out of formation at all you guys line up get the right, proper distancing. You go through the line of your men, do a quick inspection, and as you look around, you realize that you are the only company in this massive bay. It's several dozen football fields combined overall, and you're the only company there. Barely. As you look... <laughs> What's that? How many men are in the company? Uh, in the company... Let's see, you have four platoons. Each platoon is about 60 people. All right, so good 200 plus. 240? Oh, yeah. yeah. Math, we're good at it. Occasionally. <laughs> so, you guys stand there for four hours. Everybody roll me an athletics test. Just want to throw oh, out there. Boy. Can I just have like my mecha dendrite put its foot back? So I yes. lean back against the mecha dendrite. Yes, you may. Oh wow! I rolled as poorly as I possibly ever could have on that skill. I don't think it could have ever gotten any worse. Oh no! So fortunately, ah, huh. what? <laughs> <laughs> Jort For the most ready. part, Jort, you have, even despite the fact that you're actually holding a bolter, I mean, sure, it's at parade rest, but it's ridiculous. It's almost the size of you. As you're sitting there with it, you can kind of lean your weight a bit against the, uh, the weight of the gun itself. You're pristine. You're fine. Nothing. You're inflappable. For all four hours, you might look left and right, <laughs> but you maintain your bearing. I'm Sergeant, Dr. Scholes. you keep having to glance over 
looking at Private Raygun as you had told everybody not to lock their knees. You had specified it. You said, don't lock your knees. People are probably going to pass out. Well, Raygun locked his knees. And you watch as the rest of the companies begin to show up. And then you still have to wait for another hour. And then right around the time that the Lord General Matisse goes up on his podium covered in these ornate uh, tabards de- dictating not only his own lineage, his own lineage, but also the regimental uh, standard, as well as the original regimental standard of the Krieger regiment itself. As he goes out there, you watch as Varro just passes out and falls straight backwards. Oh, wonderful. As you, as you move to catch him, your own leg has fallen asleep. You would have been fine. You've done this a number of times. One of the reasons that you hadn't cared to be there on time in the first place is that Lieutenant Harper told you to be there about 30 minutes prior to when he had been told to be there. But the captain, Captain DeWert, had told Lieutenant Harper to show up an hour ahead of time. And the major had told the captain to show up an hour ahead of time as well. So by the time everyone had given out their orders, you had to stand out there for four hours at parade rest. And as a result, you also hit the deck. Uh, real quick, let's see if people notice this. Is this, this. where Jort gets his promotion? <laughs> Jort, you are now sergeant. I mean, to be fair, we're both just standing there, but I'm cheating, and you're actually doing it. So after three summary executions, let's roll up some new characters. Well, I guess it would be four, you and your comrades. Oh, All true, right. True. Lieutenant Harper hears the crash, and he starts to turn around, but he realizes he can't turn around until he tells you to go to the position of these. He can't turn around until he's ready to inspect. So he hears it, he starts to turn his head, and he stops. And you can just see his knuckles going white on his own, on the hilt of his own chainsword. You manage to, uh, you manage to crawl over and just slap Varro in the face a few times to get him to wake up. You better pull some Bill Murray stripes bullshit right now before you get yourself killed. Uh, anyone get the registration of that bus? Oh shit, it's I got sick of it. The protoplasm. If I have to slap you one more time, I will have beaten the record that your mother sent the day you were born. I already got a headache. Hold on, let me stand up. <laughs> so, you, you managed to stand him up, and as you guys are there, both of you roll me perception checks. And this is going to be at a plus 20, because it's a pretty... Out on the parade field, there's only so many areas you can look, and everyone is mostly in line. Let's see, let's perception. see. Where do we have it? We got inquiry. Doop, doop, doop. It should be at the top, oh, right it under just athletics. A... It's an oh, awareness it just... roll. Oh, it's a characteristic. It's not Sorry. a skill. Got it. Okay. Actually, uh, roll awareness. That that would awareness. Be the... There we go. That's there we the go. That would be the right one. Perception. Oh, I forgot to add plus ten, but that's still a failure. Twenty plus twenty. Plus twenty. Plus 20. Yeah. Still failure. Oh yeah, still failure. So Sergeant Laszlo, let's see if you can. No. Nobody knows. Ah, <laughs> uh, the leadership of the clan. As you guys, as you guys, as, as you, <laughs> as you are chewing out, poor private, <laughs> poor private Raygun. Wait, I, I, every time I think Raygun, I'm like, that can't be right, and I hesitate. And thinking, I go, no, I, I bet you're thinking of Star Trek, aren't you? Yeah, as a matter of fact. So you got, it, you got me. <laughs> as you're chewing out, uh, poor private Raygun, you guys. You don't even hear the sound of the footsteps coming up to you, but you do notice the shadow looming over you, and you glance up, and you see a uniform of black and red and gold trim. And as you look up, there's a man with a wonderful hat with a skull on it that you recognize to be the commissar attached to your particular company. Uh, This would be Commissar Hartley. And he looks at you with a withering gaze before he goes, Is there a reason you're not in formation? That reason has been taken care of, Commissar. Then I would recommend... Yeah, go on. Give us a moment and we will be shipshape once more. 
He looks at you, Sergeant. He looks at uh, Private Raygun. Roll me a charm test, Sergeant Laszlo. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. And I won't add any penalties, but... Oh, you were so close. Man, I really uh, hope it, your second character survives longer yes. than your first. You see, him, you see him take for a few minutes as he pulls out a little book and he, he writes something. And then he looks over and, like, with his... Well, I guess it's not a pen. It's a Calixis staining device. He sort of pushes Private Varro over to the side, looks at the name tag, writes something in his book, and he goes, Please see that you get back into formation. The Lord General is about to make his announcements. Uh, it, it would be sir, un yes, unfortunate sir. to interrupt. I told you about name tags. You're supposed to take that off. <laughs> oh, you're right. I'll just put it in my <laughs> I'm a creaker. What am I thinking? I uh, uh, put the identification number on top. There you go. Now I'm in proper formation. FM 670-1, why are you out of formation? No, um... Uh, he ends up stalking back to his corner. You go get back into formation. And then, as you're sneaking back into formation, the Lord General has already begun his speech. You don't hear the beginning part of it. However, you do uh, catch the gist of what he's saying. Namely, that you are traveling to Regalo Prime. It is a backwater planet that is nonetheless essential to the continued war efforts of the Imperial Guard and the Empire of Humanity in general. Uh, namely, due to the fact that it has vast tracts of natural resources, including Prometheum, uh, which the current invasion of orcs has completely put a stop to both the manufacturing, the mining, and the refining of over a quarter of the Prometheum on this planet. Indeed, one of the major metropolitan centers has already been overrun. And while the PDF has managed to contain the Greenskins at this point, they have had little success in driving them back. Now, they expect everything to, for the most part, be concluded within six months. It shouldn't be longer than a six-month campaign. And he is incredibly grateful that he could find so many brave and true-hearted servants of the Empire willing to volunteer to go liberate this adjacent planet of Regalo Prime. Uh, as he says this, uh, he makes a point to highlight both the commissars as well as a number of members of the ecclesiarchy who are accompanying uh, these regiments. and. He goes, I understand that you have been some time away from direct interaction with the rest of the Imperium. And while it speaks well of you that you maintain such close association with the Imperial Creed and the tenets of humanity, you are still not quite within the compliance that the Ecclesiarchy would like. And so I would like to introduce you to some of the priests which will be accompanying you to make sure that you offer proper veneration to both the saints and the god emperor of mankind himself. And you guys sort of have to sort of lean and look in between the lines of Krieger's information as you see uh, two priests approach each company. And uh, he goes, look to these brave men and these brave men, because as you notice, all of the priests in this are all males. However, they are flanked by uh, women that appear to be decked out in armor that is not just better looking than your armor, but would probably cost more than an average platoon. There you go. These men will be your solace in dark times. They'll be in instrumental in showing that while the flak armor protects you from the primitive and inaccurate weapons of the greenskin menace, that your souls are also properly reinforced with faith in both the Emperor, the Imperium, the Imperial Guard, and our sacred mission. Do not look to them 
as those who are judging you, but look to them as shepherds to guide you on your true path. And he continues to speak for what seems like way, way too long. He frequently repeats himself. At one point, you think he's fallen asleep. But eventually, uh, he looks at everyone and he goes, Commanders, thank you for your time. When you reach landfall, please give out the missions according to our instruction. I'll see you on the planet. Dismissed. <clears throat> and he about face and he marches out. Similarly, the colonels give their commands to dismiss, then the captains, and then Lieutenant Harper does an about face and he looks immediately towards where uh where you are, Sergeant. But he can't seem to gauge whether or not you had actually fucked up. You just sort of deadpan him and he goes, Platoon! Left face! And he marches you out back into the waiting area. As you guys are marching, uh, even though this place is pretty massive, this one area actually has a... You're not sure if it's an actual glass ceiling or if it's just images from the outside of the ship being reproduced on the ceiling. But as you look around, you realize that you don't even recognize any of the constellations that you're around. In fact, it almost seems like there's just a constant aurora borealis of bending light. And as you look out there, uh, everyone roll me an awareness check. And for this instance, seating may not be for the best. Well, bonus, no penalty, right? While we're rolling, bonus, just a no uh, question. What does a uh, Ecclesi 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 The Ecclesiarchy? Cover? Yeah, what does that cover? A bunch the of Ecclesi stuff. Yes, okay. they are. They are the the curators, the guardians, the epistemologists, the evangelicals, the missionaries. Everything wrapped up in the imperial faith, the faith in the God Emperor of mankind as the eternal savior of humanity. Got it. Uh, they are the ones that control that. Since we're all trained, there's also, I figured I'd just ask. Yeah, there's also rumors that they are all pyromaniacs. <laughs> uh, you do also know that they are technically not allowed there was a time when they were known as like warrior monks, they had their own armies however that's no longer allowed No. first off the ecclesiarchy priests are all male but none of them are technically allowed to be a military force in and of themselves and as a result they're assigned uh, well basically they're bodyguards since the males aren't allowed to be soldiers. They've made an entire other sort of Templar order known as the Adeptus Sororitas. They're an entirely female chapter of soldiers that are dedicated to protecting priests and the ecclesiarchy. Yeah. it. And you would imagine that those were the women you had seen in the expensive armor earlier. And nobody passed there. Awareness tests? Nope, we don't see the weird monsters out there in the warp. Yep. Oh no. <laughs> and now yeah, we're you, you guys you guys look up at the shiny lights. You had heard stories about space madness and uh Xenos able to claw their way through the sides of spaceships, but everything seems pretty straightforward and safe. I mean, Dietrich, the guy on the end in your platoon, he seems pretty sweaty and shaky, but you assume he's just claustrophobic. <laughs> claustrophobic in a football field that's a special level of claustrophobic well, I mean that's just Dietrich oh, yeah. we all knew about Dietrich when we came into this platoon yeah yep. company squad or Dietrich uh, uh, Sergeant Laszlo uh, two weeks later as you guys are going through your regular thing by the way if you guys would like to do anything during your transit time let me know yeah I'd like to get a blast pistol <laughs> All right. How would you like to go about this? Uh, I don't know. Maybe cause someone else to die so that I can get their last pistol. I don't. Uh, well, you know, the only people who assigned las pistols are the NCOs and the officers. However, uh, <laughs> as far as the las pistols are concerned, you could try and see if there's if there's any non-functional last pistols being done at the 
uh, Munitorum, or perhaps even at the armor, there might be something that's slagged and written off that you could try and repair. Oh, of course, yeah. I wouldn't want to let any uh, technology go to waste. That would be criminal. Yep, yep. Uh, additionally, you could try and find someone who is not on the up and up to just misplace a LAS pistol. I think it'd probably be better to try and uh, get a LAS pistol that is going to be destroyed for non-functioning and try to repair it. That is not a problem. Uh, as you go to the armor... Hold on, let me see if there's actually anything like that. Oh, it turns out there's not. Go fuck yourself. Well, that was yeah, fine, so, Jay. So here's the thing. There are some issues here. Namely, that... There are LAS pistols that are non-functional, but the reason they're non-functional is because uh, effectively they are getting ready, getting ready to be slagged completely. So they've been stripped of most of their parts. Now, because you're a tech priest, uh, the armorer there is more than happy to let you in, mostly because he doesn't actually know what rank you are. Tech priests are just going to try and tech priest. So... While there are other tech priests there, getting ready, moving boxes, getting things ready, there's also a number of servitors uh, moving around. I'll allow you to try and you make me a tech use skill with a minus 20, as effectively you only have a few moments to grab pieces of LAS pistol and then reassemble okay. them before as they move down uh, towards an incinerator I don't to be refurbished. Anything I can do to add anything to this. So technically, do you have the utility mechadendrite? Uh, no, right? No, I've got the ballistic uh, mechadendrite. Okay, do you have a combi tool with your tech priest? Uh, what, what did you say? I have, so in yeah, your I class... have a combi tool. Uh, well, yeah, that yeah, that came with the, the class stuff. Combi tool. Okay, so that gives you a plus 10 to your tech use. Okay. Okay, it's going to be worthwhile to go through and search all these things to see if they give any... <laughs> oh yeah, super useful. I mean, does the data slate give me any bonus? You can light things down. Okay, just making sure it wasn't like a, hey, I can look this up super quick. Uh, no, although I will allow you to try and, if you'd like, download different things and then give you a bonus on lore test later on. But effectively, that's what your brain does already. Okay, so I'm rolling a tech use of basically a minus 10 then. There you go. Satisfying mechanism videos. Yeah, he's going to fill his up with those. Oh, there we go. Hey, you managed to scrounge up enough pieces of LAS pistol to reassemble. It's not great quality. However, over time, you can upgrade it. So right now, you have one poor quality LAS pistol. Also, it has a number. Oh, it, 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 its serial number technically has been destroyed. So if at some point somebody asks about that, it might become problematic. But well, I mean, have the a LAS thing is, is that I would put it into the uh, the ballistic mechadendrite, which means it wouldn't be registered anyway, because there's no way to register it. It's part of a different machine now. There you go. So yeah, I guess over the course of the weeks that you're mentioning, I would put this last pistol together and incorporate it into my ballistic mechadendrite. There you go. You managed to build all those pieces. Uh, however, it is not reliable, just so you know. But you can upgrade it over time. Well, yeah, to where you said it was poor quality, which I'll just have to look up later. It is poor quality. Yep. So that is page 169 for all okay. of you playing at home. I was looking it up myself. There you go. All right. Um... Ah, so many things. But yeah, so... Who wants to go next for their week of transit time? Raygun, that, what are you doing? Yeah, this this is a good question. So uh, there's not a whole lot to do because we're on a ship and we just have people to talk with. So I guess I could just go around and try to be buddy-buddy with people and make them like me. Sure, if you would like, I can... Uh... Well, one thing that's a little bit interesting is that you start to hit it off with Dietrich. He seems like a nice enough sort. He's a little bit jittery. He's a little bit sweaty. But uh, he's terrible at cards. So he has that going for him. Oh, would you love to play some cards then? <laughs> we could play another round. Yeah, roll roll a D100. Let's see how you do with gambling. Yo, let's do it. Gamble. 52. 
And he's going to roll 1d100, but he's terrible, so he's going to have a plus 30. I haven't succeeded it. anything yet. Let's see if I succeed this. Plus 20. 1d100 plus 20. And, of course, I can't hit buttons. Ah, you put him the wrong way. Yep. Yeah, so he he's sitting there, and he's sort of, you know, twitching a little bit. And, like, he keeps glancing over his shoulder. He's not really paying attention to the cards. He's just putting more money down as you, like, win another hand and another hand. And he looks back and he goes, So, uh, you've been sleeping all right, Raygun? Oh, well, I mean, I didn't get enough sleep when we got on, but ever since we started, I mean, we've actually had a bed and there's plenty of coffee now. So I'm kind of hitting my groove again. Hey, no, no, same. Beds are good. Uh, you know, but like, it's a noisy ship, though, right? Like, it's really noisy, like, all the time. Like, it just won't stop always yeah, I mean, clinking just... and clanking and screaming and talking. I hate it. It's just, I can't get any sleep. Uh, really? I mean, it's not that hard, man. It's just white noise. All you gotta do is ignore it. You know, back home, you know, I used to have people just driving straight by at 120, straight past my uh, little bunkhouse, honestly. That's easy enough to ignore. You know, it's loud, but so what? It can't hurt you. Why bother? Right? Yeah, but like... Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Uh, and he looks down at his... Though. Yeah. No, no, no. I mean, you got an issue. You got an issue. If there's something like playing it around, maybe I could go find a wrench, I could bolt it down, and we could get it to stop clanging so much for you. Yeah, no, that that's uh that's great. Um I don't have I don't I don't have any more chits. You cleared me out. You got all 300 of my You already my paid me for the work. I may as well do it. <laughs> I'll just rake it in. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, as he as he pulls it, he just sort of looks at it, and for a second he's like, "Yeah, fuck it, I, I, fine, fine." And then he, he just he sort of goes back, and he he like gets back on his bunk, and he puts the pillow over his head. Okay, so he told me that there's something around here making noise. So I have tech use, and I have a toolkit. I could probably go ahead and just go around the entire area and even adjacent areas, and just see, hey, is something really wrong here? Yeah, roll me tech use. As you check out some of the panels around his his bed, everything can kind of be pulled up and moved. Mm -hmm. It's almost like they expect this place to be heavily damaged at one point or another. Yeah, uh, funny, you, huh? You look through it, and you pull up one piece, and you just hear a chink! As you look down, and you, you put it back, and there's just a piece of metal that's in multiple pieces now. You sort of... Uh-oh. You're pretty sure you broke the latch on this particular panel. Ah, it wasn't important anyway. I mean, at least now it's not jittering around. This is this is true. You uh, you put it back. <laughs> yeah, let's just move a box in front of that real quick. There we go. Ah, oh, that's so much better, isn't it? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. So you managed to get that. Tabor, what are you up to? <laughs> Uh, so I guess I'm the, I'm the chef, so I'll be down in, like, the mess hall trying to flip Sloppy Joes or whatever we're eating. Uh, yeah, roll me a cooking test. Dude, whatever, trade cook. If that's even a... I guess that would uh, be a trade, yeah. So if you don't have the trade, just roll me a, uh... I think it's intelligence-based, too, cooking. So just roll me an intelligence test if you don't actually have cooking as a skill. Oh, boy. My 29 intelligence. It's actually supposed to be worse, but so yes, <laughs> you uh, you create, and the, you're you're pretty happy with this. Like, what was your food cart specialty? Uh, sloppy joes. Sloppy joes. <laughs> like, this is just like you made it in the food. Like, you are pretty impressed, right? Like, you thought starting up a mini food truck in the back alley of like the it's like a utility closet, but you managed to turn it into a pretty decent like. Well, you wouldn't call it a kitchen, but like a place for which you can heat things. Because there's a there's a bunch of electrical panels that create a whole bunch of heat, and you've just been using <laughs> it to cook things on. <laughs> and as you sit there like cooking things up, you create you you create your famous sloppy joes. Jorts famous joes. Sloppy jorts. <laughs> you have them. And you hand them out to a bunch of different people, and a bunch of different people never come back. 
<laughs> and you think it might be because you couldn't quite get the consistency right, so you found some of the Tech Priest uh, lubricating oils and added that to the mix. Oh, uh, yeah, there we go. But it tastes fine. My Ruby Sloppy Joes. There you go. As a matter of fact, <laughs> uh, you do hear... Yeah, there's been a couple people eating this, and eventually... Uh, eventually, uh, another private sort of knocks on the door, and he goes, uh, Hey, uh, Jort? Uh, York, I'm a Bravo company. I heard you were making, like, sloppy jorts, right? Uh, yeah, yes, yeah, sir. You come in here, get you one of these sandwiches. Yeah, so uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a cook. I'm a cook also. And I was just hoping I could see you know, what you're doing. Because uh, there's, there's been some people talking about it. And you got the scuttlebutt around town about yeah, a very unique sandwich here. So um, what exactly are you using for, for meat? Well, get you some of, this is a trade secret now, some of this here mystery meat. Then you got this here, uh, the sauce. Can't forget the sauce. Squirt a couple, couple of that sweet baby J's barbecue in there. Well, and this is like this is my notes. new. <laughs> then I pull out like the tube of lube. And I'm like, this is the new secret ingredient. Put two squirts in there. If you put three, you're gonna have the runs for a couple of days. But found two squirts are the best. I put like duct tape over where it says like "do not use." Yeah. It's like, uh, <laughs> if ingested, please call. <laughs> roll, roll me a, roll me a toughness test just right off the bat. It's mm-hmm. like, have you, have you, have you had these? Have you, have you been eating this? Uh, yeah, I sample it. I sample it. Uh, right now your bu- your guts are actually starting to bubble up right now. Uh, maybe it's only one squirt. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll be right back. He goes, uh, uh, um, sure, I'll, I'll be right here. And as you as you run off, you realize there's a line to the toilet, as all the people <laughs> you had previously given these sandwiches to. Roll me That's another toughness. I think I have, this game is getting all too real. Somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, <laughs> Sergeant, oh, yeah, Lyle, I'm prairie you, realize, dog you can't line. you can't find half of your people, like you don't know where they are. And as you're as you're walking around, you just see like. A good fifteen guys lined up at the Johns. Most of them are from my squad, right? Uh, you do see Jort sort of waddling, waddle running up. Uh, you can also start to smell some of these soldiers. Uh, not everyone is as controlled as Jort. Time for some physical therapy to help keep their minds off of this. Some PT duty. I guess that's what you call it. It's a certain type of duty, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, just get them all to line up, form up, and uh, start doing exercises. Lots of jumping jacks, you know, good stuff. Short, roll me athletics and then a toughness test with a penalty based on every degree of failure from your athletics test. All right. So I will tell you what that is as you go. It's going to be a five-point penalty for every degree of failure. Keep rolling until you shoot right. yourself is what I'm hearing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you have a minus 10 to your toughness test. As you just, you're, a... just, you're hearing a very different type of military band playing. Jort, this band. <laughs> uh, take a note that one of your uniforms is now soiled and will need to be cleaned. Oh, no, I only have the one pair. <laughs> you do have the only. Yeah. Which pair might surprise you? <laughs> uh what, what's the what's the sketchy guy's name that you're playing cards with i'll just switch my pants with that guy's pants uh it's funny you should mention that as you guys are doing this a- after this circus is taken care of you see the lieutenant comes out sees or rather smells before seeing this entire scene and then he looks at the sergeant and he just sort of sort of just sort of like and just backs away slowly. He's just like one. Of, you know, there's a, he, he's with a captain. You recognize him as the captain of your company, uh, Captain Deware. And uh, Deware goes, "Is he?" And the lieutenant goes, "I, I, I think the sergeant. I have full faith in the sergeant. He, he has this handled. Yes." 
Could we uh, add attention? It's, it's, it's best not to interfere with uh, the NCOs dealing with the lower enlisted. I have full faith. And Captain DeWare goes, Good work, Sergeant. Carry on. I'm telling you, we're the, uh, we're the 40k version of Stripes. All we need is John Candy and Bill Murray uh, mud wrestling with some strippers. We're going <laughs> to get to this there. plan and just reenact Jarhead. We're going to build tanks for like 20 months. There you go. I mean, it's either that or we're going to be the halfway point of a full metal jacket. One of these things is going to happen. So uh, you do notice, Sergeant, uh, after all this starts to wrap up, you do go looking for Dietrich. However, you can't find him. Or his gear. Or his the little ID card over his bunk. He's gone. Dietrich. He was one of our my men? He was the one who was freaking out after he looked at the sky. Oh yeah, okay. Uh how do you not know your men? I'm bad with names. I'm gonna try to I'm literally the anti social one I remember, Dietrich. Well, I've got my own issues, man. No, but, don't worry uh, about it. We're just going to hold you down to the middle of the night and beat you with uh, pillow sacks. Full of soap, right? Yep. Cut out the soap. Yeah, uh, I imagine... I know like, I forgot even, something. Like... Why is this always so ineffective? Oh, yeah, he's going to go to the... Or use his radio. I guess he's got a radio to uh, call MP and uh, tell him we got a deserter here. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the LT goes, we want a tin can in space. Where can he desert? Where could he be? He goes, what's the, what's the, what's the name of the soldier? Private. Private Dietrich. Oh. <laughs> Ray gun. No, it's, it's fine. Ray it's gun. fine. No, Dietrich, Dietrich, <laughs> Dietrich hasn't deserted. Everything's fine. Uh, the commissar noticed that he was acting a little different and referred him to the ecclesiarchy. Oh, well, I... Uh, he's been reassigned out of your unit. Just Both he and his bunkmate are no longer in your squad, so you no longer have to worry about them. It's, it's handled. I, you had me scared there for a second. With the concept of a deserter who also steals his own nameplate. What's that? Sergeant Laszlo? I hope they find their place in this man's army. Well, that's unlikely. He's being summary executed. <laughs> well, underground is the place in the army. This is true. Wouldn't Probably going to be the next meal. <laughs> uh, to the end, also, recycle everything. Also, uh, this in... The summary execution reminded me. Uh, Private Varro is under your command, correct? Yes. I'm, I'm sure I'd be more you know, certain about it, but it, yes. Oh, fantastic. Um, upon Planetfall, uh, we're going to need him to, well, be present at the parade grounds. And um, let's see. We should be making planet fall in 12 hours. So just to have him there right before dinner, I think would be best. Out of character, what was his name again? Private Pri Varro. Varro V. I wonder which one of us that could be. Oh, last name Raygun. Sorry, <laughs> the name, they had the, the last name first and the first name. La these, these sheets, I tell you, I have to deal with so much paperwork, it all just blurs together. I'll inform him. Fantastic. And uh, as you leave, everything is sort of situated. Uh, uh, everyone's supposed to go back to the landing bay. You all get your gear. Speaking of which, everybody roll me a D100. As... There we go. As you guys go to the central issuing facility of the Departmento Munitorum... Oh, man, they're uh, so close to each other. Oh, yeah. Alexander, the one thing you know is that none of these weapons are particularly new. As a matter of fact, most of these weapons have seen multiple campaigns in theaters throughout their life. 
Uh, you know that at least half of these weapons are over 89, possibly 100 years old. That's good. It's a good thing. Uh, Look, if they yeah. still have them, that means they got them back, which means they were successful campaigns. These are honorary weapons. We need to honor these weapons by using them. Right. Carry on this legacy. Yeah. Um, you know, some of them have sort of like nicks and scratches on it. Uh, Alexander, your LAS pistol, you've just stripped of most of the casing to fit into your ballistic mechadendrite. Right. Uh, Sergeant Lazl, you look down and you see a an inscription on your chain sword. And in, you know, low gothic, it says, never let them see you sweat. Always let them see you bleed. And this counts as a sacred inscription for your weapon. So very cool. Let's see. Ray gun. On your LAS rifle, on your LAS rifle, uh, you have a custom grip. But it is not custom to your hand. It's custom to somebody else's. Oh, you have no. a minus you have a minus five ballistic skill. Minus five. There we go. Got just it. for that specific weapon though, right? Just for that one weapon. Yes. Right. So if you kill somebody, take their weapon. Boom. Or solved. find somebody else. And then uh Jort, your heavy bolter. Uh on the outside, scratched, uh is the name Betty. And then on the other side of it is the word goodbye. That's it. Mm-hmm. No bonuses. Just, uh, the 40K just graffiti on your weapon. Reverse of... Hello, Alicia. Thank you, Betty. Very cool. Where are these sacred inscriptions listed? Oh, it's on... Oh, uh, so that would be in the core rulebook under weapon upgrade. Oh, cool. Okay, there it is. You find it? Yeah. Told you, these things are to be honored. I'm oh, sorry, been... weapon weapon customization, I should say. And it's actually kind of ironic. Uh, uh, hold on a second. The heavy bolter, it says Betty, and you can actually see they've tried really hard to clean it up and get the scratches off, but right underneath where the uh, the feeding uh, bolt is, because it's an open bolt weapon system, right where it actually loads the belted ammunition, it's actually the outline of a face with the words, feed me. So. <laughs> I like it already. Big Betty. Kind, mm. kind of ironic, given your uh, your particular trade. What, giving people shits? Oh, yeah. <laughs> You know, that's thermal paste, right, that you're putting in the food. <laughs> right, for heat. Nobody needs to know. Place those but, uh, bullets with sloppy I mean, chose. I noticed the duct tape that you put over the... <laughs> that's... It, you've heard of pink slime in the meat. It's okay. Well, I mean, I can eat it just fine. I don't think most organic stomachs could, though. I'll just inject that into my feeding port and, you know... Yeah, system. well, space marines eat their own shit, so... I mean, I wouldn't say that to a space marine. It built yeah, that's actually... <laughs> that was actually in a uh, X-rated uh, film regarding the Astartes. Uh, it is fairly heretical to say out loud. <laughs> it's actually... Well, they don't... According, eat according, it, it according, just gets absorbed back in. I'm just according saying, to, if you get shot for not saluting the flag, I think maybe saying the Space Marines eat their own shit is going to get you. According to the Ecclesiarchy, uh, Space Marines actually don't defecate. They don't have any impurities oh, okay. in their body. They're just that efficient. I mean, because they're imbued by We're the... We're in North uh, Korea now. Okay. They're, they're imbued by the <laughs> honor of the... Uh, you know, the Amnesiah. Not the no impurities. <laughs> That's a problem Jort has to solve right away with a sloppy <laughs> joke. As a matter of fact, most of you guys, like, you've seen stories of Space Marines in the same way that, like, we have stories about the Avengers with Iron Man and Captain America. Except, like, that would be ridiculously underpowered. Well, it's also that some of this is real. 
<laughs> like these it's, uh, it's some hard of to these say stories you... are exaggeration. Some of these stories happened. Like you heard a story about a space marine who literally punched through a tank to pull a heretic out and then beat the tank to death with the heretic. You're not sure where the facts and the uh, exaggerations uh, come into play. However, none of you have ever met a space marine, nor have you ever met anyone who has met a space marine outside of the old drunk guy at the bar who swears to God he was almost a space marine until he twisted his knee during selection. That's where I heard that they eat their own shit, the old man at the bar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it's a shame how it happened to him. <laughs> tell you what. All right. So, not, not telling people that anymore. I'll tell you what. <laughs> So, over the next 12 hours, you guys are, you don't even actually really move. You just stay in the same barracks area you were. You hear the command, there's a warning klaxon, none of you know what it means. Well, except maybe the tech priest, if he wants to yeah, I have roll lore a lore war. test. I we all actually have lore war. Actually, this would be a different type of lore. You would have lore for the Mechanicus, correct? Yep. Feel free to roll that with your plus 20. Nice. You know that these klaxons are used for two things. Being boarded or detaching from the main ship in order to do an orbital entry. And do I think we're detaching from the ship right now? Uh, you've actually... All of you felt the detachment happen even though you're in space you can feel that little shift and uh you can feel the little pull of inertia as you guys are jettisoning through the atmosphere and when it's... that's happening do i have a specific responsibility that i'm supposed to be taking care of none whatsoever you know it's wise and according to the guidelines included in the operating manual for this uh lander that everyone should be bolted down for the injury like they should be strapped in and that, as a matter of fact, all of the bunks have straps on them specifically for this purpose. Well, then I strap myself in. Yeah, no one else was ever informed of this, though. Yeah, I'm not, it's not yes. my job to inform people either. So I'm just going to strap myself Space in. Space turbulence. Yeah, you all, you all watch as the tech priest just lays down his mechadendrites, come out, get the straps, buckle them in. You see the, the hunchback goes over, tests the straps to make sure they're there, and then just stands there staring at the tech priest. 